Well, today on WCR Nation, the service industry podcast, we're talking all about office space. Not the movie, we're talking about what you should be doing in the office. Office work, probably my least favorite thing in all of small business. Either way, if you have a business, if you do it yourself or you have some help doing office work, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up, y'all? Uh, if it's your first time here, have a look around. Uh, this is like 190 episodes, all 30 minutes long. Do you know how much content that is? Get your get your bippity boop out and calculate it, because I didn't prepare it for the show, but it's a lot of hours, so go back, watch it all. It is uh, ridiculous amount of like 80 uh, hours of content which breaks down to I either way check it out it's it's a lot of content if it's one of your favorite shows if you watch listen if you are a regular if you're one of the cool kids eh, sticker where is it right there it's really hard to go backwards if you're watching on YouTube but uh thank you it is because of you that I get to have uh name brand ketchup uh heinz man it's the only one um either way by the way heinz makes a ketchup that is no sugar added so it helps if you are keto but anyway um thank you thank you thank you. it is because of you that i get to have fancy luxuries in my life and it is the way that i make money so if you want to somehow kind of contribute with like an awesome virtual high five of goodness give me a call 862-312-2026 that is my cell phone so call me text me text me and be like yo jersey everything's in my cart it takes a couple extra minutes you know and that's it hopefully i make it way easier on you this is the shameless plug of the day um but uh, that's how i make my cheddar so let me know uh, also this came up in a uh, couple forum posts over there since the last episode i believe But uh, I want to let you know that as a salesperson, air quotes, right? So I've owned a business for a long time. I've done these shows for like three, almost four years. My goal in life is to help you. So if you call me or you text me or you chat me on live chat at windowcleaner.com, whatever, and you're like, yo, Jersey, what's your favorite kind of rubber? I'm going to tell you my favorite kind of rubber. If you say... Yo, Jersey, what's the best rubber? I can't tell you that. It's a personal preference. I'm not here to like force you into buying a certain thing. I know that some people are, some salespeople are really bad with that, I know. But that's not my digs. That's not what I do. So if you do call me, I'm going to give you real answers. If I don't like something, I'm going to tell you that I don't like something. So, uh, yeah, just be prepared. Be prepared for truthful answers. Sorry if you wanted to be sold something. That's not what I do. But anyway... Uh, thank you guys again, 862 Okay, so today on Nation, we're talking about office work, office space, office goodness. This is a big thing that a lot of us kind of don't do quite as perfectly or as good as we want to, right? Office space kind of sucks. I Nobody got into business so they could like stuff envelopes it just that's not what happens right we got into business to like work on our own or to uh make the kind of cheddar we make or whatever but we didn't get into it to do the clerical side of it most of us did i know there's a lot of people out there who like clerical work uh i've hired some amazing people to do clerical work and they love it and they're just so good at it like they get a high from being like super organized i am not my brain works in a different way, I guess. Like this behind me, that's a comfortable pattern of just randomness, right? I don't like the bottom stickers. They're too perfect. But uh, uh, some people really like that. So you got to find somebody if you're going to hire out that loves this work. But there's a few things that you have to get done. Regardless if you do it or somebody else does it, there's a few things in the office that you have to get done. And you cannot miss. You can't forget. Everybody always uh, worries on the sexy side of business, right? Like, uh, I made... You know, I made $100,000 last year. Look at this big house I got. No one ever's like, ah, look at this CRM I'm, you know, tracking things with. (laughs) Nobody says that. By the way, I am a fan of spreadsheets. 
Uh, I do like the track, as you guys know. Um, so that's kind of cool. I would I have shown people spreadsheets that are like super complicated and like you know you put a a number in here and it changes everything. Uh, by the way, if you like spreadsheets, too, uh, comment down below and uh, tell me what your uh, what your nerdy confession is in business. But um, there's a few things you got to do. Uh, we're going to start off kind of the list with talking about software because software is an office thing that gets missed. There's still people out there who just haven't changed softwares in 20 years. They started with something when they had like, you know, five clients and now they still have that and it just doesn't work out. So always be checking new softwares. But there's one that I want to go over right away and it's Customer Factor. I think that if I was still in the business, I probably would be using Customer Factor. And I've done demos in the past, and um, I haven't checked what they're doing now. I know they're really pretty good. Uh, there's a lot of integration as far as, like, you know, put something somewhere, and it just automates a lot of it, which is what you're looking for. So check that one out. I don't want to not touch on it. I don't have a link. I don't have anything for that. But uh, check out Customer Factor and see if it's right for you. That's a great one. But what I liked... To use also is QuickBooks. QuickBooks Online or QBO is a general accounting software, if you will, that just puts everything out in easy lists, reports, everything. It just keeps everything where it is. It classifies. You can actually accept credit cards through there. Uh, you can do a lot of different things through QuickBooks. It is just the accounting software. So if you're trying to like keep a schedule or you know send out notifications, or you can't do any of that stuff. But if you're looking for a great software, check out QuickBooks Online. It is like super cheap too. I think they always have deals like the first three months are 12 bucks or it's like 20 bucks a month. And it's super, super easy to use. One click starts. So you click a green button that says new. You put a new invoice in. You put a new expense in. You put whatever. And it tracks everything. There's such a big lack of people who, as soon as they get something in, they don't put it in their system, and I'm totally guilty of it. Totally guilty of it. But that is a huge, huge thing. QuickBooks helps you with that. So check out QuickBooks online. It's pretty stinking awesome. Um, and then a, another one in the world of general software that you really should check out, it makes your world a heck of a lot easier, is just Google Calendar. If you're using a fancy calendar thing, awesome. I, I have some very... Uh, expensive calendars, I guess you'd call them, uh, apps and things that integrate and they do this and there's remote. Google Calendar works so stinking well. And you know what you can do on Google Calendar is invite people to see your calendar. You can share your calendar with everybody. So your office staff gets it, your techs get it, your route guy, get, everybody can share their calendar. And guess what? Everybody has a phone on them. Everybody has Google calendars right in front of them and it's live. So if you have to change something or whatever, put it in the Google calendar and it gets to everybody. I'll give you a quick scenario. So we had a reschedule uh, one time. This is just an example. We had a reschedule and uh, what we did was we called um, some people, got a new one, changed it in the calendar for the most current address. Now, with our normal stuff, because we moved it, they didn't have to come back. They didn't have their envelope, which we did uh, send them all that, of course, in the mail. But they had all of that information in their calendar. So what we did was we found the cancellation. It was the middle of uh, uh, the day. The guys were already on. That crew was already at another project. So we quick entered in a new house that we moved. It was an outside only, so it was on the float board anyway. Changed the address, put it in there, sent them a Vox. If you're not using Voxer, use it. I sent them a Vox uh, and was like, hey, uh, your next appointment's changed. It's in the calendar. It is Mary Smith or whatever. Uh, all the information's in there. So now they have in the calendar on the job site, as soon as they get back to the truck, they see it, hear it. Oh, man, this has changed. Good. We're not going to what we have the envelope for. They pull it up. They have phone numbers so they can call if they're late, behind, if they're early, whatever. They have that, the address, the services that are getting, everything is there. Now, I know that there is other services that tether everything like that, and I get it. But there's something so simplistic for somebody somewhere doing something and everybody seeing it live. It's the same thing with route guys. 
uh, during the day, I can tell you exactly where our route trucks are. Now, we have GPS set up on our truck, so I can tell you that too. But you can look through and say, oh, it's 3.30 in the afternoon. Um, they should be here. You know, we can see their route schedule. You can color code different schedules. So in one under one category, you have um, a route schedule. You have crew one, two, three, however many crews you have. You have a pressure washing schedule. You can have all those things down there. So when you're looking at it, you can see color coded where those jobs are. You know, like, oh, on uh, next Tuesday, we only got one pressure washing job. We got to fill that day. It makes scheduling super, super easy. It makes everybody seeing everything all at once really easy. And the best part about it is it's free. It's Google free goodness. So check out Google calendars. It's, I'm telling you, it's one of those things that everybody goes, well, of course, everybody knows that. But if you're not utilizing it, it's pretty awesome to try to check out. So see if you can utilize it. It's, it's pretty awesome. Uh, but QuickBooks and Google Calendar were the go-to. With those two things, you can basically run a business. You don't need a customer factor or uh, something else. Uh, you just don't. Uh, as always, people always, they think of me as an ambassador, I guess, for Responsibid because I talk about it a lot. I love Responsibid. Responsibid is such an awesome program. When it's embedded on your site, people can go to it and just do their thing. I have never in my life used it the way it's supposed to be used 100%. It is so in-depth. You got to talk to Kurt Kempton over there. He's a great dude, but you have to find out what it can do. But there's so many things that it can do. When you're on a job site with responsive, even if it's on your site, again, your tech goes back to their phone, says, okay, great. Let me count up these windows for the neighbor or whatever. They can enter all the information in with the name, the email, the phone number, everything, great. Uh, so here's your price. We're going to email that uh, quote for you so you have it. Blah, blah, and it's all tracked. They all have automatic follow-ups. And again, the office can see what they're doing. Um, but again, check out Responsibid. It's stinking awesome. Uh, but that's another one to put on there. And I'm not going to talk about Responsibid because I have a lot. And people, it's like Justin Monk. The most amazing SEO company, the most amazing website building, just great company to deal with. Uh, but I talk about them a lot. So, yeah, talking about them a lot, um, people uh, kind of go numb to it. So I'm not talking about them. But there you go. Some software things to think about. Always be checking out new softwares. Like automation in industry, in business makes it so that it's so much easier for people to... Uh, basically have a robot employee, right? Say you have a program that does follow-ups. It sends three follow-ups once after two days, once after a week, and once after two weeks. How much time does that take you to pull up the list? Oh, I got to call these people. I got to remind them. You know, they got this. I got to check in with them. I'm writing this email. It's all automated. It takes all that off you. Now, all of a sudden, that like $5 or uh, 5 minutes of your day is completely back and you had sent three of those that's 15 minutes you can fill with something else so automation is huge definitely definitely look into that but another thing that you really got to focus on in the office is stuffing envelopes and again i'm just some dummy i don't know everything it just is you know i'm sorry when i tell you things that you should do because i don't mean that that way i mean things that i do and i think that would be super beneficial for you but here is our envelope layout. By the way, if you do envelopes at every job and have them printed beforehand, tell me down below, if you're watching on YouTube, where and what you put into your envelopes. Uh, but what I do is every single day before, uh, when the crew comes in for that morning worth of work, they have a binder. And inside that binder has folders with all the slips and everything for each customer. And in there is an envelope. Each customer gets an envelope. And our envelope system is very, very simple. Basically, it's when we're done with the job, I'm going to give them an envelope and it has everything that they need in there. I save a stamp. I don't have to mail it. Plus, they're getting information. Even if they throw it away, I know that they have it. And the information in an envelope is going to be, first and foremost, other services. What I do is we have third sheets printed because a third of a sheet you know, like if you folded a sheet into thirds, fits in an envelope. So I print third sheets and cut them so that I can stuff them in the envelope and there's no folding. Make it easier, right? 
But I do three services all the time. So we have gutter cleaning, roof washing, house washing, all of our services we have in these slips and whatever I want to show them we do, I put on there. And now these slips are super easy, but there's a few pictures, some information, prices starting at, you know, ask our tech, uh, ask the tech on site to give you an estimate right now, you know, something like those, that line. And getting that information out there, people don't always look at it, but it's nice to have. So think about having other services in your envelope first and foremost. The second thing is going to be gift cards. Always, 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 I've beaten it like a dead horse. Gift cards for me are in every single envelope all the time. I put two gift cards in there. They're plastic gift cards. Yes, you can get them at w, uh, windowcleaner.com forward slash printing. Uh, get them there through Steve uh, Fishgrund, uh, one of the coolest dudes ever. But we do those, two of those gift cards I have in every single one. And I always, always, always have them in the envelope. And I'm going to explain my process after I'm done talking about it. But another thing I'll put in the envelope is the window cling. If you're using window clings, which by the way, to touch on those real quick, if you're listening and you haven't heard me talk about them, a window cling is like an oil change sticker thingy on your car, right? It's a little cling. It says your last service, the date, the phone number, call to reschedule, whatever. We put those on every single house in their kitchen window, little one in the corner with the date. And all it is is a reminder of when it was cleaned last. It was our logo, our number, all that stuff. Most people aren't wiping their windows down all the time in between services, so that lasts for stinking ever. But it's always there. I put it in the kitchen window, above the sink if they have that, or some other window that's kind of noticeable but not like blatant, right? I want the homeowner to notice it but not new people coming in the house. I won't put it on like a front door or anything. It's not really what I do. Um, we'll do those on every single one. Now, I'll put them in the envelope, but when the tech gets to the job, they pull the cling out before they give the envelope because we're going to install the cling. We're going to clean it and put that on. But it's all right there, right? I also have our satisfaction form. The satisfaction form comes back to me. It's like a half sheet of paper. Uh, you can make them thirds also so they stuff real easy. But all that is is a piece of paper that asks three questions, has a notes line, a checkbox so you're fully satisfied, uh, and you know the name. And all it says is the first one, and it's got five boxes, one through five. It says, how happy are you with your service? Right? One to five, five being the best. How happy are you with the price? One to five, five being the best. Um, the last one is uh, how likely or how uh, impressed are you with our staff? Uh, one through five. Now, you'll always, for the most part, see five on the first line, five on the third line, but the middle one, you're looking for a four. You don't want them to be 100% satisfied with the price. You might be a little bit too low. There's a lot of people who just want to be happy with everything and it's not as much information, but it's there. The big thing is, is when we do our introduction, I want notes. Please do write down some notes about the service so that this gets brought back to the office. I don't look at anything. This is what the tech is saying at the door. I don't look at any of this. It's back in the envelope, sealed up, and we're going to bring it back there. So anything you want to write about the service, good or bad, we'd love your feedback. Right? And then, of course, uh, the bad news. What we call the bad news is the invoice. And this is how I say it. When I go to the door, this is our speech. When we go there, knock on the door of the ring. Hey, it's Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning. Uh, we had your scheduled for today uh, for your appointment for windows. Oh, great. Okay, so just want to go over a couple things for you before we start. First off, I have an envelope here that I'm going to leave with you. Inside the envelope is our uh, services that we offer. Look through that. If there's any services that you're like, hey, I want to know pricing, let me know, and I can get you an estimate before we leave today, so at least you know. Uh, even if we have to reschedule for the service, we can always do that. Uh, the next one is going to be some gift cards. We put two gift cards in there. Uh, give them away to your friends. Keep one for yourself. It's fine either way. Um, if you love our service and you know people, give them a gift card. It's kind of how we do referrals. Plus, it saves them some money. Um, the next thing in there is going to be a satisfaction form. Now, uh, there's a couple quick questions on that, and there's a notes line. Uh, we're really, uh, we are really. 
uh, interested in your feedback. So please do put any type of notes or anything in that about us or the service or anything that we offer. Uh, put that on that line and then there's a checkbox for satisfaction. Once you look over the windows when we're done, check that. Uh, sign it just so we know that it was from you and not from the window cleaning from us tax. Uh, put it in the envelope and then you can seal the envelope back up, give it to me. I won't look in the envelope until it gets to the office, then that's for the bigwig to do. Something along those lines. Uh, and then the bad news in the envelope. And they go, ha, ha, ha. And I say, oh, it's the invoice. Uh, all you need to do once we're done is we'll take a check for that. If you're paying with credit card, we can do that too. Just let me know when we're all said and done. Uh, usually, I don't even bring up credit card because for a check, we save fees. Credit cards are quick, but I want something right then and there. Um, when we leave, we'll take the check with us at time of closing, something like that. Uh, put that check inside the envelope with the satisfaction form when you seal it, and uh, we can go from there. Oh, great, okay. You've given them all the information, you've given them the envelope, and that's what happens, is people give you back super, super useful information. Uh, when they fill out the notes part, uh, notes part uh, they're gonna tell you things like, oh, you know, one of your texts was really nice, he really took the time to blah, 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 or they'll be like, hey, you know, we saw you pull up, and and uh, they sat in the truck for a little bit longer, I don't know if you knew that, or what, you know, like, they'll give you good and bad feedback. What I do when we go back to the office is in our front hall, there is a bulletin board, and all the good ones we always, always will put up there, and if we ever get really good uh, ones, that's what we use to bonus. I'll just throw the guys like an extra 10, 20 bucks and be like, yo, this was a really good one. You guys killed it, right? Those come back in the envelope and they have to be stuffed before they go out. So there's a few things to do. Make sure you're doing that the day before they go out. It just makes things so much easier. Um, another big thing in the office that people miss is we kind of touched on it is that accounts receivable. Um, or I should say, Accounts receivable, accounts payable. The big thing is, is we're always happy when we get money. But the other side is we don't always track every time we spend money. Now, if you can get a business credit card or debit card, whatever, um, but what you need to do is that has to be paid off every single month and it has to be done that way so it can track everything. So you can go back in, your accountant can, you can, your office can look at everything that's done on that, make sure that it's all in the QuickBooks account. Every deduction you miss is money you're paying more in taxes. You have to be better at deductions. I don't care who you are. You could be Dan Plata. He's probably perfect at it. But anyway, he's a bookkeeping beer and BS, if you don't know him. But you have to... Um, track everything and you have to write down your expenses. The expense side of it makes you understand where you are as far as uh, profit, but it also helps with taxes. Man, taxes suck. It's going to be that time very, very soon. So make sure that you're working on that. QuickBooks helps you. Super easy. Put it in, put it in uh, different ways. You can see the invoices once they're created. So as the money comes back, uh, we write our calendar, we print out our calendar actually from Google and they can see every person and next to that they write, you know, they're paid and check, it's in blah, 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 blah. We can see all of that. So when we go in, we check with that. We make sure that it's all in QuickBooks so that nothing gets missed because I did have something, um, gosh, maybe the first or second year, somebody had written me a check and I brought it to the bank and it fell between the seats of my car somehow. And I would send them something like, I didn't get this check. You know, I didn't, you know, we didn't get it. And blah, blah, blah. Oh, I paid the check. Oh, I didn't get the check. Oh, I had this check number. I'd, I gave it. And it was this big thing. And the guy would not write another check. And uh, sure enough, uh, we were having the trucks just going over cleaning. it. found the check like two months after he had finally written another one. And was super angry because we lost the check and couldn't believe. So from that point... I got a bank bag, right? The zip up ones. Um, if you're doing your online deposits, uh, they didn't really have that then. So, but I always had that. And then we always tracked it as soon as it came in. So I knew. So it was one of those things that, you know, learn from your mistakes kind of thing. Always, always, always track everything. I know it's not glamorous. I know you can't go on Facebook and be like, yo. I got all my checks and deductions in, yeah. Like, it's not bragging. You, you can't brag on it. But it's really, really valuable. We always talk about 
uh, making a strong company. These are things that build a strong company and putting systems in place help that. So again, accounts, receivable accounts, uh, payable, your expenses, make sure they're in there. The other side of it is if you're collecting at every single job, sometimes you'll get something, some weird situation. But if you let them know at the door, I'll take a check home with us. If you're paying with card, we're going to accept it right now. All that fun stuff. Then you're not going to have a huge account uh, receivable. You're not going to have a lot of people owing you money. And by the way, if you're watching now on YouTube, comment on what your accounts receive. How much money are you owed right at the second? Just look at these numbers. This this always, and I'm bad at that too. I mean, there was points where it was like $32,000 at one point. I remember like, you know what? $32,000 in cash just to like, uh, that would influx to like pay and every. And you know you're going to get it, but then you have to actually spend time and money to collect money that you've already spent time and money to do. is just ridiculously inefficient. So collecting payment at the time of service helps eliminate that. Now, with route jobs, it's a little bit different. I will always, 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 always. If somebody's till paying, awesome. I don't need a card. If you're not till paying, I'm going to keep a card on file. When we do service, I'm going to give you the invoice so you know that we were there. We'll talk, high five, and then the office will charge your card that day. I want it to be as seamless as possible every single time so I don't have to spend money and spend time to do something that I spent money and time doing in the first place. Collecting money, you should never have to pay somebody to collect money for you when you already did the service and you paid text to do it, right? I'm done off my soapbox. Those are big ones. Uh, another one to quickly touch on is your marketing. If you haven't done a marketing calendar, go back, watch or listen to some of our other episodes that we've done on marketing. The marketing calendar is super, super, super important but making sure that you're the one doing the marketing and making sure that you're doing what it says on your marketing calendar every day, week, month, and year allows you to GPS your growth, right? You're going to know exactly where you're going and how to get there. So definitely do your marketing calendar and check that. If you haven't, just search WCR Nation Marketing and pull up some other episodes. I won't be bore you if you've already listened to it. Um, <clears throat> another thing that the office does that is sucky that can be better is hiring. So hiring, firing, uh, payroll, uh, commission bonuses, all of that stuff, all of that stuff sucks. So what you can do is hire a temp agency or a payroll company. Now I've had more people talk to me about this and send random messages than anything else, probably everything else combined. And I've only had one person who said they couldn't find a company that would do it uh, in their area. I think it was Texas, but I haven't talked to them in a while, so they could have changed. But what we do is we would take our employees. We'd actually have, we've, we've done this with a few different uh, temp agencies is usually what you'd consider them, but they're hiring agencies or employment services. And I would call, the guy's name was Tim. So I'm just going to say, whatever, Tim's payroll. So I would call Tim. Okay, so first off, let me start over. When I hire people, I put out ads. I put out all the uh, uh, getting resumes and all that thing. They come in. I do the interview. I find the guy I like. There he is. His name is Steve. And I really like Steve. Steve, you're going to start on Monday right? We talked about the trial things in hiring. We always would do a full day trial. Uh, with a full day trial, you're technically look at your legal side of it, but you're under a certain dollar amount, then they could technically be for that day, uh, paid for just a day if they didn't work out. Again, check that all. But what I would do is I would call Tim and I would say, hey, Tim, we got Steve starting on Monday. And Tim would go, oh, great. Okay. I will be there at eight in the morning. Okay, great. So I would tell Steve, you're starting at eight. Come on in, make sure you have your driver's license, everything with you. So what would happen is at eight o'clock, Tim would show up, Steve would show up. They would go off into one of the offices and they'd be in there for a good 20, 30 minutes. Tim would go over everything that they have to offer. Now, if you use an employment agency, they my, my employees, they had uh, their pay, Taxes, of course, everything through there. They had uh, term life, term disability, dental vision, 
all the insurance coverages plus paid time off, uh, vacation, and paid um, sick days. And again, different places do different things. They had all of that. I paid an employment agency 37% to every dollar. So every dollar I paid the employee, I gave the agency 37 cents. And for that, I got all that other stuff. Plus, they filed and paid the taxes on that, which is absolutely incredible. So, by the way, employment agency make that so much easier. But then I could also get a higher caliber of employee when I was like, yo, I offer insurance. They're like, yeah, well, heck yeah. Right? Hiring sucks. Do it to the book. You can use QuickBooks for that, but get a, a temp agency or a hiring a payroll company to do it. Um, work something out with them. Uh, call around, see if they'll do that. Say, hey, I'm hiring my own employees, but I want to run them through you guys. Um, there's also six month, like, you know, temp agencies usually will run people for six months and then they need you to hire them on or not. A lot of companies will bypass that for you because of the type of thing that you're doing. So check on that. Super, super awesome. And the big one at the end, uh, is going to be time tracking. Now, again, what I do is spreadsheet everything, but I spreadsheet for that day. So if they leave at nine o'clock, they get to the first job at 9.03. On that calendar, they write their in time and their out time of every job on there. I can see their drive time because this job ended at 10.43. This job didn't start till 11.04. I can see the drive time between them. But the other thing is I could take the entire day with drive time or without, if that's how you want to do it, and I can calculate what that day is. So for this day up, you guys made $68 per man hour. Up this day, you made $71.16 per man hour. I will then put that into my spreadsheet and track that information every single day, every single crew. Now I can go through and on that I can calculate what our average hourly is. If our average hourly is below where I want it to, all prices raise from there. I could put a 10% raise across everything and now I'm raising up that hourly. Or if there's a problem at the end of the day, I'll talk to you guys and be like, guys, this was like a... Uh, uh, $200 job, but you were there for two hours. How does that work? What 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 went on there? Why was that so bad? Oh, well, that was the one that, you know, uh, Mrs. Jones, she was talking to us or we did. It. I can track everything. If they say, well, I don't know, then I can look at that and they say it was bid wrong. I can change the price for next time. It's so super valuable to know where your money is going. And that's one of the big ones. So track your time. Whew. Office stuff can be kind of interesting it's great for the long run of business it's super boring i hate office stuff myself but there you go we're talking about the office thanks for watching uh and listening if you need any supplies this is my call to action please do let me know shoot me a text busy season's coming up so little orders big orders it does not matter i want to put your orders in that's how i make my cheddar now remember it does not cost you anything extra it's actually easier for you hopefully and I get credit for it. So there you go. Let me know. 862-312-2026. I genuinely, genuinely appreciate. Uh, I know I say this and every single day I get people like, oh, I just started listening to the podcast. I want to give something to you, man. Thanks for everything. That really means a lot. So thank you guys. If you're letting me put orders in, like really, really thank you. This doesn't just, it's not like this is a side thing. This is what I do for a living. So thank you guys um, for that. Again, 862-312-2026 check it out more importantly go out there do your office work and until next week go out there and be epic <laughs>